watching this video tutorial from our course The Ultimate Introduction to Arnold 5 for Cinema 4D. Make sure to visit our website mograflus.com and check the entire course out. Okay folks, in this lesson we take a look at the Arnold Standard Hair Shader, which is a physically based shader to render hair and fur. Now this is the scene that we are going to be working with. You can find this model in your Cinema 4D's Canon browser. In Cinema 4D, when you add hair to an object, uh, automatically a hair material will be applied to that geometry. You can see these hair materials here. Or you can add a Cinema 4D hair material to the hair geometry. As you can see in this scene, we have three hair objects that combine to together produce this uh, hair model. And each one has one Cinema 4D hair material applied to. This Cinema 4D hair material in case you didn't know, controls so many things. For example, the color of the hair, how thin or thick it is, whether the hair has king, frizz, or clamp into it, and stuff like that. When you work with Arnold and add an Arnold hair shader to the hair object, you only control uh, the color and the specular attributes of the hair, its opacity and transmission properties. Uh, but other properties of the hair, like how thin or thick the hair strands are, or whether it has kink or uh, frizz to it, uh, comes from Cinema 4D's hair material. So you don't need to delete the Cinema 4D's hair material, and you shouldn't. You just add an Arnold's hair shader beside an existing Cinema 4D's hair material. So here we have these three hair objects. Let's create... Arnold surface and add a standard hair shader and let's open it up. So as you can see we have this very nice hair preview that can be very useful while developing hair shader and actually if I go to my network editor and uh, in the deprecated section you can see we have this hair shader and this was the hair shader sorry let me just bring the hair shader and this was the hair shader uh, before Arnold 5, it was very powerful, but definitely the new standard hair shader is a lot easier to use uh, and uh, it's amazing and it's so powerful and can create uh, all the looks uh, with just a few parameters. So the new standard hair shader has replaced the old and deprecated hair shader here. So let me just delete that and get back to the material editor. As you can see, there are so many parameters here. Uh, and before doing anything, let me assign this hair shader to the hair objects that we have in the scene. Uh, this is a very great preview, so I'm gonna try most of these parameters on this preview before actually trying to render it out uh, in our scene. So let me just open up the window so it can be just a bit bigger, something like that. Now, there are a few parameters that are essential to developing uh, realistic hair looks using the standard hair shader. You can see we have tons of parameters, but uh, there are only a few ones that can be adjusted to achieve realistic hair looks. And probably the most important one here is melanin. And we can also use uh, parameters like melanin redness and melanin randomize and also specular roughness, IOR and shift to achieve highly realistic hair looks. Now, the most important one, as I mentioned, is this melanin volume. Melanin is basically the pigment that gives human skin, hair and eyes their color. Dark skinned people have more melanin in their skin than light skinned people have. And the melanin parameter here is used to generate natural hair colors by controlling the amount of melanin in hair. Colors will range from blonde at around, let's say, 0.2 to red and brown at around 0.5 and to black at 1. So as you can see, by simply using the melanin parameter, you can control the color of the hair in a very very realistic and plausible way so as we increase the melanin volume we're going to get darker and darker hair color from blonde to brown and black let me for now probably use something like 0.4 now, what the melanin volume here is doing is it just produces realistic, plausible hair colors 
especially human hair colors. But if you want to control the color of the hair exactly with a specific color, what you need to do is to actually zero out the melanin value and control the color of the hair using this color parameter here. So you can use any weird color that you want, okay? So that's totally plausible. Also, if you have a specific texture that you want to assign to your hair object, you need to actually connect it to the color input of the base section. For now, let me set the uh, color to white and melanin to uh, something like 0.45. Uh, we have this uh, base weight up here, which basically controls the brightness of the hair and it's a multiplier for the base color. So if I, so as you can see, when it's set to zero, we basically get no shading. And as I'm increasing it, we are gonna get uh, more of the properties that we have defined down here using these parameters. Let me just set this to one. Then we have this uh, melanin redness, which controls the redness of the hair. Now what I'm going to do, let's uh, go ahead and uh, try uh, a few different redness values. I'm just going to draw a region around this hair model. Okay. Now let's try different redness. I'm going to try uh, a melanin redness of 0 0.5 and 1 and after uh, it's done I'm gonna get back to you and show you the results okay folks so the renders are done and if I go to my picture viewer we can take a look at the results in the first render the melanin redness value was 0 in the next one it was 0 0.5 and finally it was 1 as you can see by increasing the melanin redness value we are increasing the overall redness of the hair strands okay so let's leave the melanin redness for now at one. Also, let me just stop the IPR and open up the uh, window, this preview here. The next parameter that we have is this melanin randomize, which randomizes the amount of melanin in hair fibers, which result in a more random hair color for the hair strands. Now, if you take a look at the time being the melanin randomize while you set to zero and we only get the uh, all the hair strands having the color based on the melanin and melanin redness value but if I increase the melanin randomized to let's say one the hair strands are gonna have different melanin and melanin redness value so basically the melanin and melanin redness value will be randomized for the uh, hair strands here so let me just um, increase the melanin randomized to one so now as you can see different hair strands have different melanin values and we get this randomized look that can be useful let me just zero out the melanin randomize and then in the uh, specular section we have roughness which basically controls the roughness of hair specular reflections and transmission and lower values give sharper brighter specular highlights while higher values give softer and duller highlights so this is the render with let me just set the roughness to something like uh, 0 0.02 here, just to be able to compare. So as you can see now we have this shiny bright hair and with sharp specular highlights. But if I increase the roughness, let's say to something like 0.5, now we have this kind of matte softer look. Let me set the roughness probably back to 0.2. Uh, we have the IOR, which is the index of refraction. Each hair fiber is modeled as a dielectric cylinder with hair reflecting off and transmitting into the fiber depending on the IOR. Lower IOR values give stronger forward sc scattering and higher uh, values give stronger reflections. If you just use a lower IOR value, like this is uh, the look with IOR set to 1.50 and if I use a lower IOR value now because of the lower index of refraction and uh, the overall result is gonna be a less reflective hair and if I increase the IOR let's say to something like one point let's try to 2.5 maybe so you can see now we get this very bright 
more reflective hair strands okay so uh, you can see the effect of increasing the IR is having a more reflective look and let's try probably something like two for the time being 1.55 is gonna be uh, the more physically accurate value for human hair then we have shift which is the angle of scales on the hair fiber and shifts the primary and secondary specular reflections away from the perfect mirror direction or the root of the hair strands for realistic results for human hair a small angle between 0 and 10 degrees should be used and for most cases something less than 4 will work so this is the result with the uh, angular shift of 3 degrees and if I increase this let's say something like um, maybe 15 degrees so as you can see how the increased shift number changes how the highlight looks let me try the default value of 3 here now those were the most important parameters to achieve realistic hair looks this uh, teen slope section is also very very important but the good thing is you actually can leave them at white and based on the melanin and uh, melanin redness and melanin randomized values that you define these values will be adjusted automatically so you really don't need to adjust them but specular tint is basically is a scale of the primary specular contribution which simply multiplies the primary specular color specular two tint is the scale of the secondary specular contribution which simply multiplies the secondary specular tint and as i mentioned for realistic and clean hair this color should be set to white to let the base color tint the reflection now we have this uh, diffuse section which uh, again is simply for artistic controls and uh, you don't need to have any diffuse contribution to achieve realistic hair looks and this controls the diffuseness of hair and with zero giving fully specular scattering and one fully diffuse scattering and for typical realistic hair no diffuse component is needed dirty or damaged hair might be approximated with diffuse scattering so if you want to have some kind of dirty hair we can increase the diffuse or maybe control the uh, color with a map so if i just increase this to something like 0.1 you can see we start to introduce some diffuse contribution to the hair okay you can obviously increase this let me just set the diffuse back to zero for now and then we have this emission section which is very obvious what it does and in the advanced section we have a few parameter uh, the opacity obviously controls the overall uh, opacity and transparency of the hair you can actually use when set to white obviously you're going to get a fully opaque hair but for kind of achieving a softer look you can actually use a lower opacity while you may be something a bit darker but uh, it can actually help with the realism of the render but at the same time it's going to increase your render time uh, like crazy so as you can see it's gonna result in an overall uh, more uh, realistic softer hair look but at the same time it's going to be very very expensive for your render especially if you have hundreds of thousands of hair strands on your model so in this case let me just set the opacity back to white we have the indirect diffuse and the indirect specular which controls how much the uh, hair shader will be affected by indirect diffuse and indirect specular at the time being we don't have any diffuse contribution but if i actually um, zero out the indirect specular here let me if it's, see if it's visible in the preview or not so if i zero out the indirect specular to let's say zero you can see now the indirect specular won't affect the uh, hair shader so this is zero and this is one then we have this uh, extra depth parameter if I go to my render setting you can see right now the specular ray depth is set to one but this extra depth is set to 16 and this adds extra specular ray depth just for this shader and this parameter is very important for lighter hair color to make them as realistic as possible so if I use a lower value let's say something like 0.17 so this is with the extra depth set to 16 and this is if I set the extra depth to something like 1. 
so as you can see immediately gets darker and less realistic so for dark for lighter hair colors you need to have this extra array depth so the shader can look correct okay so that is about the new standard hair in arnold for cinema 4d and one thing obviously because the hair is mostly specular based and we don't have any diffuse contribution to actually get rid of noises in your hair renders you need to increase the uh, specular samples specular direct samples need to be increased to get uh, clean hair renders now before actually wrapping up this lesson let me show you two renders uh, for the final render settings if i just go to the Arnold render you can see i have five camera samples and four diffuse and uh, specular samples and um, if I go to my picture viewer, you can see this is our first final render and the material that I have used for this render is this blonde hair. As you can see, the melanin is set to 0.25. I have increased the redness to one. The roughness is set to about 0.4 and the IR of two. And this is the render that we are getting. As you can see, it's really, really beautiful and realistic thanks to the Arnold standard hair. And in this second render, which is this one, we get this kind of brownish reddish hair color. And this is the material that I have used for this one. And uh, we have the melanin set to about 0.5. The melanin redness is, point, is one and we have the other settings are the same. Uh, roughness 0.4 and IR is two. And we get this very nice and realistic hair render. Beautiful. Okay, so that's about Arnold Standard Hair Shader. And I will see you in the next lesson to continue on with the shading section of this course. So see you there. Thank you for watching this video tutorial from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Arnold 5 for Cinema 4D. Make sure to visit our website, mograflus.com, and check the entire course out.